Thank you very much. is the 
natural legislation and the secretion risk increase the phenomena of irrationalism, obscurantism, and of intolerance whose human, interhuman, and social consequences are incalculable. Close quote. The epistemic level of artistic education and its social function are revealed now more than ever antagonistic. The global license and the new liberal perspective that promotes the expansion of the educational market things to impose a managerial paradigm that led the marketing of the artistic education. Answering to the new cultural conviction consists to placing beyond all the determinists that lead the arts to the mercantilization towards turning into turning for the alienation and submission of people as well as considered artists considering artists and their public and privileged class. How can higher artistic education face the 21st century challenges? What reforms does the artist, higher artistic, need to order to offer an integral and open formation? Alternatives. Hmm. Alternatives. In such situation, it is suitable to wonder which are the possible alternatives, which is the role of the institution in the area of the education, research and artistic creation facing today's challenges, what function do the arts have in its current society, how to change the vision in higher artistic education in Latin America, is the disciplinary paradigm viable? What consequences has this paradigm generated? From my own academic experience in Mexican institution of higher artistic education, I have feel the urgency to move from a disciplinary vision to a transdisciplinary one. I sustain that only with this change, artistic higher education, especially in Latin America, it will be possible to offer an integral education for solving real world problems effectively and effectively and contribute a genuine social transformation. Considering what is happening with respect to the arts in the present century, I perceive a radical change with respect to what characterizes it during most of the 20th century. Therefore, in order to initiate a dialogue among all the art from and between art and other fields of knowledge, it is urgent to lay bridges to join effectively and effectively the arts with sciences, the tradition, spirituality, and summing up with society in its multiple ways of existing. Transdisciplinarity is an epistemological propose, proposal based of the principle of complexity that see the advent of a human being capable of contending with everything that is between, across, and beyond what has been considered a reality. To understand this broad scope, it is necessary to apply the methodology proposed by Lazarus Nicolescu, whose three pillars are level of reality, that is ontology, the included medium, that is logic, and complexity, that is epistemology. Proposal. Assuming that the purpose, the artistic education, is the elevation of the spirit to achieve it, requires linking all the knowledge and recognize that only from its human dimension will it be at the service of my kind. For a better understanding of the being and the world, artistic education must overcome the radical disjunction of knowledge across disciplines and establish bridges between them. The art, as a way of expression of human being, can exist in a horizontal plane or in the same level of reality where it responds to the inertial sequence of events. But if we take conscience of our being and the relationship that we establish with everything, 
that we perceive, we will be able to have the experience of the cosmic and conscious verticality. That is to say, of traveling simultaneously in several levels of reality. In this way, the union of the subject with the object from where the hidden field immersion will be possible. This is the wall of the transdisciplinary research, as Basarab Nicolescu says. The art that are generated from, by and for the community implies supporting the equity, the proportionality and the cosmic and conscientious vertical. Only in this way will they be able to generate projects to live education that involve body mind, emotion and movement. Therefore, the construction of bridges implies a permanent exercise of caring of effective and creative accompaniment, especially special, participative, where the principle of inclusion and the multiple experiences, practice, problem, the art will be present. Hence, I also consider violently the proposal expressed by Sanchez Perez about a methodology for project as an architectural center of curriculum that, based on research, become adaptable and adjust it to the needs and changeable characteristics to the educational program. The projective nature of the curriculum must try to produce a social, cultural and educational reconstruction to turn the students into real protagonists, no repeaters, no imitators, or form or established models, but others with creativity and critical thinking. And finally, transdisciplinary artistic education must be seen as a permanent exploration movement that is the result of opening critical space that questions the artistic stage, its articulation with other disciplines and with life. Thank you. Uh, main uh, validation. 
I'd like to, I'm really pleasured and almost uh, every article I cited uh, your uh, work, publications, journal article and books and it's my pleasure that I can meet you personally, I want to tell uh, you this uh, also. And uh, for example, it's uh, Hungarian because uh, it was uh, made uh, by my Hungarian students, only some important things. And really I was proud when uh, this uh, concept uh, map uh, prepared because I say Tudomány Ágak, it means science and he's an engineer and he mentioned, aha, uh -huh, I need some element of knowledge on uh, applied uh, mathematics and informatics. I don't know which one is that. I don't know which one the sign. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, applied mathematics. And the second one is engineering, the third one is uh, organizational behavior, and the fourth one is uh, economics and uh, financial. And uh, on the top there's uh, objectives, tools, uh, project, project, uh, and some success and so on. And uh, really the exam uh, of this uh, subject is some workshop. Every student uh, uh, need to draw uh, their own theme and uh, we can see it in the screen and everybody has to tell about it and uh, may I say suddenly we can see uh, those students who get a real big picture in their mind. You know, it's a very clear picture uh, uh, in my student's uh, mind if he's able or she's able to draw this type of concept mapping. And really, this is a sample, uh, and uh, uh, this activity is used uh, during this subject. Yeah. And uh, yeah, two minutes. Two minutes. It's enough. Thank you. Uh, and uh, one last one. Okay. And uh, only some uh, another things. What does it mean for me, especially for my research, uh, transdisciplinary? Uh, nowadays, I'm really interested in behaving or. According to Richard Thaler, maybe misbehaving the young generation and to examine or to observe uh, this behaving or misbehaving, uh, I need not only uh, decision making, not only economics, but any other uh, great or powerful thinkers. For example, Richard Thaler I mentioned he's a Nobel Prize economics, but original psychologist and uh, Mark Bresky, who really defined firstly the digital natives, this uh, concept, and I really based my research on Dexcode. I think uh, uh, some uh, audience uh, can know this main, the very famous book is titled Wikinomia, and this wiki philosophy, which is uh, 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 very uh, familiar things and behavior for younger generation. And for example, Nicolas Carr, who said that the younger generation has a shallow knowledge instead of older generation deep knowledge. And the last one, uh, really the absolutely up-to-date book, is Howard Gardner and Katie Dobbs, who said it's not, we can say the younger generation uh, can be find an app generation because also they use some application in their mobile phone. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.
it's about 100 years for us he's old. Yeah. And with the help of Professor uh, Nicolescu, who made an effort and went to Chile and gave us a big push. And then we start at the faculty of invention where I work to introduce the subject of transdisciplinary. Yeah. Uh, the program that I, I am in charge of is the transdisciplinary education and spirituality in higher education. But have, first, I have to read the information, the, uh, a nice uh, piece of, of uh, writing from a person from Colombia who died, who died in the year 2004. His name is, was Gabriel Garcia Vantes. And after reading that, I start thinking in transdisciplinary. The translation says, many things that are true today will not be true tomorrow. Perhaps the formal logic is graded to a school method so that children understand that how it was the old and abolished habit of making mistakes. Very interesting. Yeah, it's a big criticism. And he wrote this he, he, we're starting this, the second millennium that we are now on. Well, uh, for us, it's difficult to start in this subject. The universities are a kind of supermarket of fragmented knowledge. Yeah. And it, it was quite difficult to, to start because beside that, scientists says, think that Science is an ideology, so you cannot define, define, a uh, attack uh, uh, the science. So therefore, uh, the problem is that people at the higher level of education, like the doctoral degrees or master degree. If you want to talk with them about transdisciplinarity, no, they won't accept it. it because as a, a, a philosopher from India, he said that they develop the mechanical mind. But this is the kind of a student that we do have at this moment, at least in my country, and I have several the same in our country. So, what I decided to do is not to be at the doctoral level or at a master level, but to start with the undergraduates. So what I did this year, I started with a number of 24, five students maximum to enroll in the course. So finally, I am teaching them and they are learning more than teaching learning goals, and learning about transdisciplinarity and try to understand uh, all the work that has developed uh, Dr. Nicolescu. And it has been a fantastic experience. Yeah. Uh, students from medicine, uh, in, uh, students from engineering, from faculty of engineering, uh, people from the school of, uh, the school of uh, politi politics, the, uh, I have students from physics, from mathematics, from chemistry, so it's a mixture. And we discovered that we all could talk and understand. And the central point was about of explaining them and know what scientific is, is that uh, start thinking in human being development, which is, was is totally absent in all other faculties. Faculty of education, we think in, in human beings. But the other ones, they don't, they just think in the production or the work that they are going to do. So, uh, and I remember the first uh, meeting, uh, I was talking about similarity, and I gave that information, and a student says, but well, this is a, 
is, is not objective. And I, I'll say, I respect too much a lot of students, and I say, well, do you know where the word objective, objectivity comes from? He said, yes, objectivity is something of the method of science, but objectivity comes from objects. Everything that science does, when it says this is objectivity, is based upon results and, and, and trials of a particular, uh, uh, how could I say that? A particular, a particular uh, material, but that oh, does not come from individuals. So, when, and after that, I said, well, subjectivity is a subject. You, we are subjects. What happened now, that when the subject tries to speak against a scientist, the other person will say, will, as Edgar Morales says, that I am uh, forced to deny myself because the object, objective, object that the science used denies my knowledge, my feelings, everything. So we started working on that and finally we are, we are, they are all understanding and uh, I hope that we could get very good results. They are now uh, adding some, some information about the, the physics, uh, quantum physics. Now they understand better and they have a student from physics, they help me with that. So at first, a student from medicine, they say, no, they didn't believe anything. No, you have to take, drink, uh, take that and that and that. There is a for a, uh, from a, was born in New Zealand, uh, and he, he is a famous person that has added <laughs> and have the student from biology that this human beings are not only a chemical and biological mixture. They have energy. energy. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, we can this well, the most the most important problem that they have is with the students that they have the square minds. Uh, but we have in order to change we have to start from from the new people. The other ones are I will, I will say contaminated, but they are defending their position. Okay, so uh, I have some comments here on what, what I was going to say, but uh, I will leave them here so if anyone is interested, we will take a copy. I'm sorry, I will have to give some of those because I am not really fine. <laughs>
concerns all of you. For two things. There are a lot of people here who know me personally. And they know they I can be very, very, very harsh in the sense I can't make concession with leather. That I never did. I was surprised. Frankly, very surprised. I was a very high level. Yes, sir. sir. <laughs> a lot of people know me. I said that a lot of people know me, and they know that I can be very tough. I never make concessions on levels level, intellectual level, spiritual level, for talks, for conferences. Here, I was really surprised by a very high level, I don't say that to make it pleasure, but really a high level of all the talks presented. And I was very, very much impressed. That's a good sign, and, and for transdisciplinarity, and for us. Uh, it's the second thing I would like to tell you that uh, what I learned uh, perhaps the most at this conference, at this congress, is that you listen to the other. The fact that you respect the other in the time you have as better speakers uh, contributed to the round table. You know, I consider that Congress really like an experiment. It's true that I worked two years for that. But at the beginning, many people said, you are crazy, will never work. How to put so many people in panelist sessions as contributors for round tables? I said, I am refused parallel session, always. Because in parallel session, it can be 200, a few people coming. It's nonsense for me. So I wanted everybody of you to speak in plenary session. Short time. But it worked. And from, from my point of view, it worked because you respect the other and everyone respects the others. So, I am very impressed, I'm very happy for that, and let's now enjoy our reception. Good reception, I think. Okay, thank you.